Hello, everyone. It's Al Nigren, Executive Director and Curator of the New Jersey Film Festival, back with you to share some filmmakers who are going to be presenting their film at our festival in September. I must say that we've been here for 36 years presenting wonderful films to the Central Jersey community, and thanks to all of you who have come to our programs. Well, the festival this fall will be starting on Friday, September 15th, and will be running through November 2nd. We have about 27 films that will be screened. Many of them are part of a competition where we'll be giving out prizes to best documentary, best feature film, et cetera. And the films themselves, uh, usually, uh, the film screenings usually have a short film as well as a feature film. And then we also have the added benefit of the directors there to talk about their film with our audience. Over the next few weeks, we'll have a couple of filmmaker interviews. And today, we're really lucky to have two very special people here today. Uh, their film is called Saving the Great Swamp, Battle to Defeat the Jetport, which is about New Jersey. And today, we have Scott Morris, director of the film, as well as producer. Co-producer. Co-producer, Larry Fast, who's also a very famous musician. So thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Uh, Scott, tell us, how did you get involved in making this film? I know it's a labor of love for you. It, it, it is, um, and we were also fortunate that there were a lot of um, people in the area of New Jersey where we live who had a philanthropic interest in having the story told, so we were able to get funding for it. It's a one-hour documentary. Um, it took two years of work in production, yeah. and we just completed it late last year. So thank you for uh, accepting it into the festival and for inviting us to the, this, this program with you as well. Um, the, the, I've been living in Chatham for 25 years, which was a short bike ride for me to the swamp, and I would often go there for exercise and just to experience the beauty of the place. And yeah. um, never really knew about this story uh, of how the building of a huge jet port was prevented by a grassroots effort in mm -hmm. the community to stop it back in the 1960s. Um, and Larry um, is also in the community, and I started talking about the idea of making a documentary. And uh, uh, Larry's expertise really is in, in the history of the area. And uh, we started to really dig down and figure out what the story was about, and found it to be an incredibly compelling narrative. And very timely, and very yeah, timely. Yeah. Uh, and it took a full 10 years back then for the opposition to the jet port to resolve the problem and eventually, fortunately, won the battle against mm -hmm. the Port Authority of New York, uh, who, who were the ones that were pushing very hard to build this 10,000-acre jet port in the middle of Morris County. Yeah, most people don't know. There were three, three basic airports, but there was a desire to build a fourth at the end of the 50s, right, Larry? That's correct. That was and, exactly. and, and, and what took place after that? I mean, how did the Port Authority decide they were going to select this particular place? Well, it, it was an ideal place for what they perceived to be their needs. Uh, it was not too far from New York. They looked at about 15 or 17 other locations, but it kept coming back to Morris County, to the Great Swamp. It was an era when swamps were not understood. They weren't liked. It was looked at. Uh, as just raw material that could be drained and paved and made useful instead of the bucolic, nature-laden uh, world of farms and uh, wildlife that was so there. So this is prior to the environmental movement that we come to know in the 60s? It was just beginning to sprout, and this was one of the places where it sprouted and started turning into what it would later become in the 1970s. But this was all done at the very earliest stages. It was a very fascinating documentary for me because I knew nothing about New Jersey politics from that era. And it's fascinating also to see how the, the Port Authority wielded such power at that time. So. Well, we, we really set out to tell the, the story of the politics and the action that happened at the time. Uh, so, so when you hear the title, The Great Swamp, um, it's not really a nature film about the swamp, although there's, uh, there are nature scenes in it, of so course. you always have a sense of what's could have been lost. Yeah, they're very beautiful, too. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, maybe it's a good time to run the first clip. Sure, of course. Um, Let's give people a taste of what they can see. Right, and th this is basically our little one-minute trailer that we've been sending out, and I think it gives you a pretty good idea, overview, uh, overview of, of what the film is. Um, and also, by the way, it's, it's uh, our narrator is Blythe Danner, um, who we were very lucky to have she's great. agreed yeah, to be she's involved in this project. Well, yeah. let's watch that clip. Yeah. In 1959, 
a sparsely populated area of New Jersey, was chosen as the location for a new airport. It was to be the world's largest jet port, designed for the latest technology in air travel and covering 10,000 acres of wetlands. It was a vision of progress promoted by the power brokers of the day, government agencies, industry, and politicians. But there was something the power brokers didn't expect, an opposition with a way of life to protect and their own vision of the meaning of progress. Think about what was going on in the 60s with air quality being noticeably bad, water quality being terrible, and people were beginning to get upset with what was going on in the environment. What was at stake? The way of life of tens of thousands of people. Basically, this area would have been destroyed. We would have been totally obliterated. We would have obliterated the Great Swamp. This is the story of the grassroots effort to save a little-known place called the Great Swamp and the nine-year fight that began in a local high school and escalated all the way to the United States Congress. So that was really terrific, and it gives our audience a taste of what they're going to see. Are you guys going to be coming to the screening so you can discuss the film with our audience as well? Absolutely. Planning to be there. Yes. Yeah, it's really a very interesting film for me as a person who loves nature, and to see how all of these people came together to combat this, you know, jet port idea in a very, very beautiful space. It was a much more complex story than 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 what people had been familiar with up to that point. There are so many players. There, there are the politicians, there's housewives, there, there are, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and it started at a local high school, as you saw in the trailer, and went all the way to President Johnson, who, yeah. who in 1968 had signed the Wilderness Act, right, right. Um, which is what ultimately turned it into a refuge, because originally it was not. It was not considered a refuge, yeah. or a wilderness for that matter, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah. Not officially. In fact, uh, during the time that the struggle took place, it was when the, the background legislation at the federal level came mm -hmm. into being, and this was one of the very first places to be so designated. Yeah, yeah. It's so interesting also from a political perspective, you see what Jersey politics was like during the 60s and how it evolved and how the federal government also played a kind of differing role. So it's very fascinating. Folks, if you'd like to see this film, you absolutely must come. It's going to be playing on Sunday, September 24th, we have a wonderful short film by Sarah Levitt about the river keeper for the New Jersey Meadowlands, and uh, Bill Sheehan is going to be there, the captain uh, who's the subject matter, and Sarah's going to be there too, so we're going to have a wonderful environmental program that evening. And uh, Scott and Larry will be there to discuss Saving the Great Swamp as well. So one low price for both films, and you get to interact with the filmmakers, $12 for the general public and $10 for students and seniors. If you'd like more information, you can go to our website, which is www.njfilmfest.com, or you can call us at 848-932-8482. Thanks so much, guys. Look Thank forward you. to seeing you at the screening. Thanks. This wasn't just any airport. This was four 12,000-foot runways. Most people were wondering, what are they thinking? Where is this going? There was a small map on the front page, and the small map showed that our house would be a control tower.